The agency lost that day in Dallas. And in hindsight, the reasons are all too clear. Arriving at the airport, John F. Kennedy was unexpectedly greeted by warm, friendly crowds. But behind the joy was the terrible piling up of mistakes. Number one, over the Secret Service's objections, Kennedy insisted on riding in an open convertible, where he was vulnerable. Mistake number two, the motorcade route passed right through Dealey Plaza, where the president was a wide open target. Number three, in response to political staff, agents who usually surround the limousine were pulled away so people could see the president better. One reacted by throwing up his hands in disgust. Three times he protested what would prove to be a fatal error. Kennedy was killed by the third shot from a sniper rifle, well after agents, if they had been nearby, could have pulled him out of harm's way. Bottom line is that they lost the president. And uh, the agents that were there and, took, and, and, and were responsible at the time have taken that very personally. Kennedy's death shook the Secret Service. That was a, a tragedy for, for everyone. But like in any tragedy, uh, lessons were learned. Number three, in response to political staff, Agents who usually surround the limousine were pulled away so people could see the president better. One reacted by throwing up his hands in disgust. Three times he protested what would prove to be a fatal error. Kennedy was... In response to political staff, agents who usually surround the limousine were pulled away so people could see the president better. One reacted by throwing up his hands in disgust. Three times he protested what would prove to be a fatal error. Kennedy was killed by the third shot from a sniper rifle. Well after agents, if they had been nearby, could have pulled him out of harm's way. Around the limousine were pulled away so people could see the president better. One reacted by throwing up his hands in disgust. Three times he protested what would prove to be a fatal error. In response to political staff, agents who usually surround the limousine were pulled away so people could see the president better. One reacted by throwing up his hands in disgust. Three times he protested what would prove to be a fatal error. Specifically, agents were told not to ride on or near the rear of the limousine. Now these orders were funneled from the assistant and special agent in charge of the White House detail, who was the planner of the Texas trip, Floyd Warren to one of his assistants, a shift leader by the name of Henry Roberts, who was in charge of the follow-up car. You can see an agent, Henry Ripka, doing his normal duty, jogging besides the limousine, when in the follow-up car, you can see Henry Roberts stand up and wave him back. And you can see a very perplexed agent Ripka waving his arms in the air several times and seeing. You can see an agent, Henry Ripka, doing his normal duty, jogging besides the limousine, when in the follow-up car, you can see Henry Roberts stand up and wave him back. And you can see a very perplexed Agent Ripka waving his arms in the air several times in seeming disgust. There was another last-minute change made at Love Field, invoked by the Secret Service. The Dallas Police Department motorcycle outriders were told not to be beside the car. It went from four to six down to a measly two riders on each side. And to add insult to injury, they were pushed further back in the motorcade by those agents not being by the car, by those motorcycle officers not being in the position, it opened up President Kennedy to a field fire from in front and from the rear. In the months before the trip to Texas, there had been a growing number of threats against the president's life. Despite the increase in conspiratorial activity in the month of November 1963, in the apparent red alert the Secret Service appears to be under in response to this activity, the agency acts in the opposite fashion and actually reduces the security and acts like no threats on the president's life are occurring. Why? Uniquely on that day in Dallas, the press, the camera crews, Kennedy's military aide, who would normally sit in the front of the president's car, and even his personal physician, were all relegated to the rear of the motorcade by the Secret Service. 